Before we had Apex, Deviant and Tempered Monsters, we had Monster Hunter Freedom Unite hitboxes. The year is 2009, Capcom releases Monster Hunter Freedom Unite to the Western world on Sony's iconic handheld, the PlayStation Portable, also commonly referred to as the PSP. And for many longtime fans, this marked the release date of a quintessential entry that encapsulated the series' defining features at the time and still to this day, those being brutal difficulty, intricate weapon mechanics and deeply satisfying cooperative multiplayer. In 2024, we look back at this game not only with nostalgia, but with an appreciation for its role in shaping the series into what it is today. When Monster Hunter Freedom Unite launched, it represented the apex of Monster Hunter's popularity on the PSP, and in Japan especially, the franchise was a cultural phenomenon. With players gathering in cafes and parks to team up via the PSP's ad hoc multiplayer, the game's design actively encouraged this social interaction, which became one of its defining features, even though its full potential remained underutilized in the Western world, where the PSP didn't enjoy the same ubiquity. Despite this, Freedom Unite still found a dedicated fanbase outside of Japan, and the release was praised for its massive content, including over 500 hours of gameplay, nearly 400 quests, over 80 different monsters, and a wide array of armors and weapons. The sheer volume of content offered a profound sense of value, particularly in an era when handheld gaming was often considered a more limited experience compared to the home consoles. Monster Hunter Freedom Unite's core appeal lay in its challenging and rewarding gameplay loop. Each hunt was an arduous battle of attrition, requiring knowledge of monster behaviour, mastery of weapon types and a keen awareness of resource management. Unlike its more modern counterparts like Monster Hunter Rise and World, Freedom Unite did not hold the player's hand at all. The learning curve was steep and mistakes were punishing. The combat in Freedom Unite was deliberate and methodical as well. Each weapon, from the weighty greatsword to the quick and nimble dual blades, had its own learning curve, with animations that committed the player to each action. And the game's monsters, many of which have become iconic over the years, like Tigrex and Nagakuga, were unforgiving and relentless. So patience and careful planning were rewarded, but a single misstep could mean a lengthy quest failure. And just to top it all off, the lack of quality of life features like healing while walking or automatic crafting forced players to be strategic. Battles were long and often required several attempts to learn a monster's movement, timing and weak spots, and this difficulty gave each victory immense satisfaction. Unlike the more streamlined experiences of the more recent titles, Monster Hunter Freedom Unite's difficulty fostered a sense of mastery and accomplishment, and for those who have played the title, definitely know where I'm coming from. While the single player campaign was substantial, Monster Hunter Freedom Unite truly came alive in its multiplayer. Teaming up with friends in local co-op felt exhilarating. Each player had a different role to play, whether it was tanking the hits, healing with the hunting horn, or simply just dealing large amounts of damage with a greatsword, and the synergy between different weapons and playstyles made multiplayer hunts much more dynamic. Unfortunately, the PSP was limited to local ad hoc, but there were a few workarounds that players started to implement over time, like Xlink Kai or other tunneling apps that allowed Western players to experience something akin to online play. And this level of commitment just demonstrated how strong the community was in wanting to achieve that multiplayer experience, even in regions where Monster Hunter wasn't as ingrained in the culture. Luckily for myself, I had siblings that all had had a PSP and Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, so we had a four party team most of the time, which was amazing and it really did add to the experience. But even before those players who didn't have that, like that scenario to, to work with, there was always these workarounds that many did venture out to obtain. While the gameplay and content are timeless, the visuals of Freedom Unite are very much a product of the PSP's limitations. 
and of course the time the game was made in. The game's environments are largely barren and the textures are rudimentary by today's standards at the very least, however the monster designs and animations are still very impressive for the time period that this game released and of course the console limitations it was working with, it is very impressive what Capcom was able to do and with each creature having a unique and fluid movement style it really conveyed a sense of realism and danger and to be honest for me personally at least I think it did do a very good job at being as immersive as it possibly could with what the developers had to work with. And then we had the music in the game which remains one of its high points with epic battle themes like the unforgettable Tigrex and Fatalis tracks that amplified the tension of each encounter all the way to the beautiful and absolutely legendary Poké Village theme which still to this day is probably my favourite village theme from a Monster Hunter game and of course there is probably large bias there given this was my first Monster Hunter game but I think this was that one theme where you could just sit in the village and just listen to this play on repeat while hearing I still hear the NPC noises especially the uh, the village chief or the person that gave you the quests at the end of the village um, that person's voice and weird dialogues where she sounds like a cat the grandma uh, I can just hear that echoing in the background of the theme when I listened to it. It, sh it was just such a good theme overall. And I think even in the, just when you're exploring the various maps and you're outside of battle, they did a really good job with the minimalist sound design outside of combat with the wind blowing and distant roars, which all contributed to that immersive wilderness experience. In 2024, I think it's impossible to overstate the influence that Freedom Unite had on both the Monster Hunter series as a whole and Capcom's overall design philosophy. It was one of the first titles to introduce the concept of G-Rank, which is a much more difficult tier of quests that have since become a staple of the franchise. And then we have the roster of monsters, many of which debuted or received significant updates in Freedom Unite and they continue to feature prominently in modern games, which just speaks for itself. The success of Monster Hunter Freedom Unite helps cement Monster Hunter as a global franchise, laying the groundwork for the future entries and I feel like without Freedom Unite and the way Capcom developed it and of course the public reception, it's doubtful that Capcom would have been able to confidently take the risks necessary for the evolution seen in later entries, like how we got Monster Hunter 3 and then that became 3 Ultimate and so did 4 becoming 4 Ultimate and then we had the true global domination that was Monster Hunter World which cap catapulted, I can't even speak anymore, which catapulted the series into mainstream and its inevitable global success. With Monster Hunter World and Rise pushing the franchise to new heights, Freedom Unite now feels like a historical artifact from a time when handheld gaming was more niche and Monster Hunter was still building its legacy. The meticulous, sometimes punishing design of Freedom Unite contrasts starkly with the streamlined systems of modern entries where accessibility and quality of life features are paramount. However, for fans of the series' roots, Freedom Unite represents a purer form of Monster Hunter where each hunt was a hard fought battle of skill and preparation and teamwork. It's a game that thrives on commitment and perseverance and in 2024 it serves as a reminder of how far the series has come and acts as a fantastic send off game to the second generation of Monster Hunter showcasing all of the best stuff that this generation had to offer. And with that said guys, that does bring us to the end of this video. Let me know down below what game in the Monster Hunter franchise you started out with and what molded you into the hunter you are today and I look forward to reading all of your comments. As always, a like would be extremely appreciated if you did enjoy this video. It does help with the channel a ton and I appreciate all of your support so far. And of course, be sure to subscribe for a lot more Monster Hunter content. Don't forget to join our Discord, link is at the top of the description. Lots of awesome other hunters in there, we would love to have you with us. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.